Well, that was Claire Greer from the GMB union there. Let's put some of what she said to the Scottish Greens co-leader and the Scottish Government's Minister for Zero Carbon Buildings, Patrick Harvey. Thank you very much indeed, as Good ever, morning. for coming in to be with us this morning. Good morning to you. Um, so Claire Greer there saying, we're missing out on jobs, skills, investments, because you and your government are burying your heads in the sand, you're closing your ears and your eyes, you're ignoring what the rest of the world is seeing. What do you say to her? The Scottish Government is fully committed to the huge opportunity that Scotland has in a clean, green, renewable future. And that is going to bring huge numbers of, of not just jobs, but high paid, well paid, rewarding careers to be had in re-engineering our, our energy system around renewables, uh, around green hydrogen and around demand reduction so that we, uh, we don't just put ever more demand on the grid, but we match our demands to what we can supply sustainably. That's a hugely bright future for Scotland if we commit to what Scotland has an advantage in. Scotland has an advantage in renewables. We've got these abundant resources and our task is to harness those resources uh, and make them work for people as well as for planet. Right, that answer has framed the next 10 minutes of interview. Thank you very <laughs> much indeed for doing that. Um, so, because there, there's loads to go out there. So we've just been hearing from our experts that renewables are great, but we've got problems at the moment. Technology will no doubt advance, but we've got problems with the grid, uh, the, our capacity to s distribute what green energy produces, and we've got problems in terms of storing it at the moment. You were talking there about green hydrogen. Is that what you see as our base load in future then? And where are we in terms of the production of that? Green hydrogen is in its early days as an industry, uh, taking renewable energy, uh, using that electricity to produce hydrogen, because it's not a fuel, it's a, it's a way of storing energy, and then taking that to where it's needed. Where it's needed is things that you can't decarbonise easily in other ways by directly using that electricity. It's always going to be more efficient if you can, just use the renewable electricity directly. But things like heavy industry, some parts of the transport system, uh, and some issues like grid balancing, trying to make sure that you're matching supply against demand. There's also going to be a huge export market for green hydrogen for those countries that don't have the abundant renewable resources that Scotland is blessed with. So what's the base load for our grid, for heating our homes? Well, when, for, when, when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, as we've just been discussing. Well, for heating our homes, of course, we need to be shifting to el towards electricity. Uh, Devices like heat pumps are much more efficient because they're getting all this free energy from the air uh, or other sources around you. You're not just converting electricity into heat. Uh, so you're getting sometimes three uh, times as much heat as the electricity you're putting uh, into it. But we do need to address uh, issues around the grid, both in terms of decarbonizing heating and decarbonizing transport as more people shift to electric uh, traction for, for vehicles. You know, some of that is the big transmission lines, the, the backbone, if you like, of the grid. A lot of that's the, the more local distribution networks. You know, we need to make sure that uh, they are able to cope. Uh, and it's the off-gem decisions, the UK government decisions, uh, well, the UK government regulate, it, it determines the, the role of off-gem, the independent regulator, those decisions affect how we can direct investment into okay. grid upgrades. So that's hugely important to join those dots. Okay. And the UK and the government, there is a bit of a mismatch. Exactly. The UK government, as we discussed, are joining the US, France, Japan, Canada, Finland, South Korea, the Netherlands, Sweden, a whole host of other countries who reckon you can't get to net zero without nuclear. Why do you think you're right and they're all wrong? Well, look, I'm not here to judge any country that doesn't have abundant renewable resources for looking at other options. I think nuclear is always going to be risky. It's always going to be expensive. The price, not just for constructing the site at Hinkley that the UK government's continuing to pursue, but the price they've struck for the electricity supply afterwards is hugely more than the clean green renewables that we're producing. So it's an expensive but form of energy. But the renewables aren't enough at it the takes moment, a right? long you, time to, And it takes a long time to build. Hinkley is, is already way overdue. So I don't think nuclear is a solution for Scotland's needs. Scotland's problem is not generating capacity. Scotland's problem is in how we decarbonise the way we use energy. Well, how do we make, get, just, get the sorry, grid that we need Patrick, to get it where just, it needs to be? Just one second. And storage we, as well. We just heard that Scotland's problem is generating capacity no. at, the time, uh, uh, at the moment. Because it can take you... I, I was reading yesterday, if you create a, a wind, an offshore wind farm just now, it could be 10 years before you get onto the grid. So w this is, I mean, this is... Have, this have is, you seen how long Hinkley is taking? Well, I mean, decades, I mean listen, it takes a long, it takes a long time to build. And, you know, some of, the, some of the issues around building 
renewables, we can uh, address some of the, and already have been addressing some of the, the issues that, that give rise to, to delays. Some of which though, is again about off-gem decisions on grid. Those developments need to get a grid okay. connection if you're gonna get the energy to where it needs to be. I just so, wanna say something quickly about storage as well. We're already seeing uh, devices coming onto the market that bring more storage onto the grid. And you're gonna see real innovation in that in the, in the, the, year, the years ahead. In fact, okay. very soon, you can be seeing household devices that are much more affordable, much more long lasting, much safer, uh, and are able to uh, store both okay. either electricity or Good. heat or both. So here's a question. I'm in the process of moving house. So I'm going into a new house that's on oil because I'm off grid at the moment in terms of gas. Uh, I was thinking maybe I'll get a, a um, heat pump for that house, but actually maybe I think it's, let's use the comparison of buying a laptop. If you buy one today, you know there's going to be one that's twice as good at half the price in about three <laughs> years' time. I'm thinking about that with a heat pump at the moment. Am I right to think about that? They're going to be better and cheaper in three or four years' time. You should certainly be, be looking at all the options. Uh, should and, you wait? And in some parts of Scotland, one of the options will be uh, wait for a heat network to be built in your community as well. If you, particularly in some of the denser urban parts of Scotland, that's going to be mm. a more likely solution than individual house by house or flat by flat approaches. Home Energy Scotland is the website to go to if you want advice about your own circumstances. But you know, to come back to the laptop comparison, you wouldn't just keep asking yourself that question and never buy a laptop. No, at some point you've got to jump into the market, of course. Let me ask you though about, uh, you know, the UK government is planning to build a new nuclear plant every year in England and Wales. Andrew Bowie was telling Holyrood last week, they want to bring them to Scotland too. They'll bring jobs, they'll bring investment. We heard what the GMB had to say there. We will be using nuclear power in our homes in the future in Scotland because it's going to be part of our grid. You're just preventing the development here. So what you're saying is we'll take the power, but we will just say no thanks to the jobs and the investment and the skills and the money. As you see, not just energy policies develop in different parts of the UK, uh, but also the development of high voltage direct uh, transmission uh, across the, uh, the, the, the whole of Europe and, and beyond over subsequent decades, perhaps even down to North Africa, you're going to be seeing a, an electricity grid that joins many different sources mm. across a very, very wide area. Why yes, don't we want yes, the jobs? Yes, you will ultimately use energy that's produced under a different energy policy. So why don't we want countries. the jobs? We do want the jobs and we, where we will get high quality jobs from is in where Scotland has a strategic advantage. That is in renewables, that is in green hydrogen. That's Scotland's uh, you know, selling point at the moment and it's an incredibly bright future if we commit uh, to seeing that happen. Are you uh, absolutely, your government going to shut Torness in less than five years, our one nuclear processing plant at the moment? The plan is 2028, could that change? Could it be extended? Uh, I'm not going to be able to comment on that specifically. I would need to, uh, it's not a decision that I've been personally okay. involved in, let, so I would need to- Let me I, refine I that question. Is, is nuclear development here a red line for the Greens? If the Scottish government came in and said, actually, to be honest, maybe some of these new small scale nuclear plants, maybe we will have them, would you walk away from the Butte House Agreement if that happened? Well, I don't think that's likely to happen. What I'm very clear about is that you know, obviously any change of energy policy would have to be debated, not just between the two parties in government, but across all the parties in Parliament. I would have serious concerns about anything that dilutes our clear laser-like focus on developing our renewable energy potential and the credible potential mm. of green hydrogen as well. We Nuclear would take too long, it would be too expensive. I don't think the waste management issues have been fully resolved. It's not where Scotland's advantage lies. Would you understand why some people would be sceptical about some of what you're saying this morning? Ten years ago, we were promised we'd be the green energy champion of Europe. There'd be 28,000 jobs. There's about a tenth of that number. Um, we were told that we, by your government repeatedly, we produced a quarter of Europe's wind power. Actually, the answer, the, 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 the reality is, is a small fraction of that, which you now accept yourselves. We were told we were going to have a public energy company offering supply by 2021. It didn't happen. Would you understand why people think, I've heard it all before? What I recall from when I was first elected, which is 20 years ago now, was that Scotland was already, even under the, the Labour Lib Dem coalition, before the, the current government was in place, across the political parties, Scotland was setting ambitious targets, not just for climate, but for generating renewable electricity. And every time one of those targets was set, the naysayers would say, that's impossible. Renewables can't do that. Renewables are a niche case. Uh, you'll never reach that target. Those targets were beaten every time, a more ambitious target set, and the same naysayers came out of the woodwork yet again. Okay. Scotland has done amazing work at generating more 
energy from renewables. We now have an, an even more challenging job to do to make sure that we apply okay. that ad advantageous, cheap, clean, green renewable electricity to heat, to transport, and hopefully, if the UK government breaks the link with gas this, prices, this gesticulating make, finger it, means make sure it benefits time. people's G bills as well. Give me, give me this answer in one word. I'm sorry about that. If you could, Hamza Youssef and Mary McAllen, the Net Zero Secretary, are at COP just now. Would you have gone? Uh, if uh, if that was my role, if I was You'd the Cabinet Secretary for Net Zero, okay. uh, I would have tried to you find another try. way, okay. as I always do. That's it. We're out of time. Patrick Harvey, thank you. Uh,